Okay, hello, I'm Amy Todd, and um, I'm really happy to be doing this presentation because I think a lot about the relationship between my online teaching and my on-campus teaching, since I teach some of the same classes in both modalities. Uh, I teach two classes online for UMass Boston. One is Introduction to Biological Anthropology, and one is uh, Peoples and Cultures of Mesoamerica, or Mexico. So, um, just start. Just, I began using Blackboard a long time ago to augment my on-campus classes, so long before I even ever thought about teaching a class entirely online. I was using Blackboard. I also have used Moodle, because I teach sometimes at Brandeis University. I, and for a little while, I was trying to use Google, Google Groups, which was a bit messy. Um, and now I use uh, um, Blackboard and Moodle. And uh, I want to talk about some of the things that I do in both online and on campus. So some of these will be kind of obvious. If you use Blackboard, it's really great for making announcements. And I do this all the time. Um, and also, of course, for posting resources, for posting links, for posting files. Um, for content, when you teach, when you switch, when I switched over to teaching exclusively online, it really forced me to become really creative about looking for resources because the entire class was online. So I, I really spent an awful lot of time doing that. And then I found um, materials that I was able to then bring into my on-campus um, classroom class, regular classroom classes. So um, uh, anthropology, especially, this really depends on the topic that you teach, but biological anthropology, which includes human evolution, is very, very dynamic. So there's constantly um, new research reports and new material coming out. It also happens to be covered very nicely in the popular press, in the media, general media. So there's a lot of material out there that I think is very, I teach the introductory level for that class. It's very technologically appropriate for students. So in fact, I've actually moved away from using a textbook at all, much to the chagrin of the textbook people that come knocking on my door. Because there's so much material out there, and it could be so nicely organized uh, in Blackboard into sort of lesson plans and modules. And then it's quite easy to kind of uh, remove links as they become not so useful and add new links. So um, there are also some very interesting resources. There's this online tutorial, which I won't click into it, but uh, that does that comes from Rutgers University on genetics. I happen to just come across it. It's completely free, open access, and very, very useful. Students can go into that and work their way through various modules on genetics. And originally, I began doing that in my in, on my online class because I needed to have that kind of they needed to have that kind of practice. But then I it occurred to me why not use that for my regular on campus classes? So I do that. Uh, another benefit, I think, of using, in, in a way, when, when you're teaching online and then you're bringing a lot of the resources back into, the, into your classroom, and I actually carry over my online classes. I have, uh, have them exactly copied onto my on-campus classes, and then I don't keep two separate versions of the class, one for online, one for on-campus. That would be very hard to do. So I just move them continuously from one semester to the other, whether I'm teaching on campus or online. And I remove certain content if it's not appropriate for the, for the classroom. And that, that's how it works. So it keeps the, the classes very kind of up to date and fresh. One thing that I really enjoy is that the content can be developed in part with students who are especially enthusiastic students. And this is very useful, especially at the upper level classes. I teach primate behavior. I only teach it on campus. And it's a 300 level class. So students are able to, I always set up a forum where they can post just whatever, anything that they think is interesting. So this was a student, I liked the way he wrote it. Uh, I had mentioned that I was looking for a documentary on lemurs, and he said, well, I know comically little about primates. I do love a good BBC nature film. And so he says, this is Island of Marvels, pretty awesome, and so forth, and has, he likes David Attenborough. Um, and then he posted the link, which is very nice, uh, to the entire documentary for that I could then use in a class. I could use it in my introductory class if I wanted to. So it's a really nice way of having this kind of uh, collaborative support. And I think the students also enjoy helping to kind of build the content of the class a little bit. So I like that a lot. Uh, if students, if you don't have Blackboard to work through and then students are sending you emails with links, my, my own personal experiences, I tend to lose those in the flood of emails. They just get synced 
to my bottom of my inbox, whereas things that get posted on Blackboard are right there, very visible. And then I can easily move the link to the normal course modules you know, from a, a little discussion format and add it as appropriate. Um, for assessments, uh, this was Irene's suggestion for me. Uh, of course, when you teach exclusively online, your assessments, which can include tests or quizzes, are entirely done online. And it hadn't occurred to me that I could take some of that into the classroom and so I actually do this now. I, I think uh, all of us have sort of mixed feelings about multiple choice, fill in the blanks type questioning. But again, it depends on the content and what you're teaching. Um, as sort of a partial way of assessing what students are learn learning, I think that can be appropriate. So for my course in Mexico, I do give some Blackboard assessments, and I don't know if I can call this up easily, um, on, you know, on campus. So I either have the students meet in the library, or I have them, uh, the, what is it called, mobile computer lab, deliver the, the laptops to the classroom. I don't know if everybody knows that can be done. And then the students will take the assessments. So I just wanted to show you kind of how I do it. Um, this is assessments. And I always will give the students a practice quiz because I feel that part of the, the point of the assessment isn't to make the students panic or to be, com you know, to be burdened by a new technology for sure. So I always have a practice quiz up there that they can take. And it's simply a pretty straightforward, I don't know if it's going to go into it, um, you know, straightforward objective assessment with questions and they answer them and then they move on to the next question and then they hit submit at the end and it's pretty much self-grading except if they misspell Guatemala which they always do sometimes I go back and give them credit if it's not too bad but there so there they have this and it's again it's a small it's a minor part of their final grade but it allows you know them to have this practice practice quizzes practice quizzes all of them are up there for them they can go back and look at them and they can also see what they got wrong. And if they have any problems or issues, they can talk to me about that. Um, it's nice because you have a bank of questions and you can add and subtract questions depending on new films that you show or depending on conversations that you have in the class. So, um, so that's assessments. Uh, another, just I wanted to, to just mention this, another assessment that I've started doing is a kind of hybrid assessment. I, I don't do this uh, on my online classes, but I do this on my on-campus classes using Blackboard. And this is actually the new version of Blackboard, Blackboard Learn, so I know some people are starting to use that. Uh, but this is, I do crossword puzzle quizzes with my upper level classes, where the students actually are the ones who create the, the clues for the with crossword puzzle, and then there's a, 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 a kind of application that allows you to kind of put it all together into a nice crossword puzzle. So the students get partial credit for the for the clues that they provide. They all provide free clues or so. They, that's they use it as their study guide, and then they go and take the crossword puzzle on um, primatology, and um, and they enjoy it, and everybody does well on it. So it's kind of fun, and it's, it, again, it's only part of what they of the various things that they have to do, but it, it's particularly good when you have a technical vocabulary uh, that they need to be working on. Um, then there's, of course, discussion forums that probably everybody will talk about discussion forums because I think that they're one of the real strengths of using Blackboard, and I think a lot of people are aware that, particularly for sensitive, sensitive topics, a lot of students are more comfortable uh, talking on, black, on Blackboard, writing posts and engaging with one another that way than necessarily uh, talking in, cl in the classroom. That can be really uncomfortable for, certain stu for some students, and it can be really uncomfortable for certain topics. In teaching human evolution, I tended to stay away from um, creationism, evolution debate in the classroom because it would never, I wasn't that good at leading those kinds of debates. Um, but what I found is on Blackboard, it's beautiful because you could really kind of engage students, you could post resources, you could they could educate one another, and they could really think through their, their, uh, their, they could go through their thought processes over the course of the semester, and then they weren't, they, they could clarify, and so forth. So I, I actually find that discussions on Blackboard work really well, and particularly since many of our students do a lot of texting and writing, and it's something they're kind of comfortable with. So, 
Um, I always start out with an introduce yourself to the class discussion forum to force them to get into Blackboard immediately, and it's great at like one point because they have to do it like within the first week of class. And I fa have found that to be very useful for me because I go back and look at their their introductions at times when I'm sort of starting to forget who they are, what their background is. I can go back. I even go back years later because they, if I need to write a letter of reference or something and I want to remind myself about the student, I can do that. There, I always have uh, course logistics questions and answers and course content questions and answers. And again, um, if you're just teaching entirely online, you have to have that. But in the, if you're teaching in the classroom, it's also useful. The course logistics, when students say, um, where are we supposed to be on Friday again? Or I can't open this link. Or you know, they're confused. They post it. I do sometimes, because we're meeting on campus, I sometimes don't attend as much to my Blackboard course site when I'm actually teaching in the class. So I tell them that. And so um, they don't rely too heavily on Blackboard to communicate with me. And then um, I also always put up, these are all un <coughs> ungraded um, in the news, so students can post their resources there. If, if something interesting comes up, they post to that. And it's just uh, low stakes, ungraded assignment. And then I have these uh, graded forums. And this has really changed the way I teach. Because I teach online entirely, for example, the course on Mexico, I taught for the first time last summer online. And I actually had to make up a lot of discussion prompts, which were kind of like homeworks that students would respond to. I ended up taking about half of those and turning them to assignments for my on-campus class. And I have them submit in two ways. One is uh, as a journal entry. I don't know if people know how that works. But the journal entry I keep private, so the students all answer the questions, each one. And then I, I, on a particular, when it's all due, I make it public so they can all read each other's journal entries and reply to each other's. They, they say that they like that. They like not being able to see one another's posts until it's done. Uh, it, it creates a certain amount of stress, I think, and they start copying, not copying the content, but kind of emulating each other. And, and so this, this has worked really well. So they, they do the discussion. They respond to a question. It's very usually a pretty detailed question. And, but when I teach it on campus, then I also have them submit a hard copy. I like that, and I also have some of them come up and present to the class whatever the assignment is. So it's it's very integrated. To be honest, I prefer that. I, the, I think the hybrid modality is the ideal situation. I know it can't can't happen, but I really enjoy that a lot. So, um, okay, and that's that's it. I could show some resources, but I think that I had 20 minutes. I think we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, I think 11:20. Good amount of time.